Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about tileable textures, which is why we're in Photoshop to start off with, having a look at my kitchen floor, which as you can see is uh, a linoleum tile set. Um, not my kitchen floor, I rent, so you know, not my choice, very 90s, but you know, what are you going to do? So um, I'm going to show you how to make a tile set out of something like this, for example, um, if you want to take your own photos or um, otherwise you could find uh, tiles online, but we're going to do this um, using reference. So as you can see, I this is what my floor looks like just for reference. Uh, but what I've done is I've gone in and taken photos of four different tiles. Um, I'm just going to do this with one, but um, I, you have to just trust me, I've done this with four different ones. And um, what we want to do is we want to create four perfectly square images that we can use for tiles. When you're using tileable textures, they don't necessarily have to be square, but in this particular example, we will be using square ones for the sake of ease. So I'm just going to hit C to use the crop tool, and then I'm going to hold down shift because I want to constrain the proportions to be one by one. Um, and then I'm going to select an area with inside the tile uh, that doesn't show the grout around the outside. And, um, that's because we're going to add the grout in uh, using a render man node rather than actually trying to get the perfect square grout uh, uh, perfect square tile from my kitchen floor it's easier just to do this and as you can see we've got a tile texture now that we can use um, and it doesn't have to be uh, tileable it just has to be a square image basically and you could tile anything um, I'm tiling the floor because I think it's sort of a good example so uh, once you've done that you want to save out your image um, as whatever format you want um, preferably you'd use something lossless like a PNG or an EXR um, or a TIFF or a TAGA um, or if you're strapped for hard drive space a JPEG is fine that's what I did in this particular example um, not the best file format for rendering and stuff but it will do uh, so once you've saved that out um, save four different your four different versions I'm using four different versions for this example and um, and then we'll jump over into Maya and I'll show you how to connect it all up all right, so here we are in Maya in a fresh scene. First thing I'm going to do is go to the polygon shelf and create a polygon plane. And um, then we're going to go into the channel uh, box editor. Um, and we're going to change subdivisions just to be one by one. It's just preference. Uh, and then the plane, we're going to change the scale to be 10 by 1 by 10. So the X and the Z are, are 10 units uh, by 10 units. And then we're going to go to the render man shelf and we're going to have the plane selected and then we're going to click the Pixar surface shader button. So it's just added the shader to that surface. Now we're going to start creating our tile shading network. Um, to do that, we're going to go into the hypershade editor. So in the hypershade editor, we're going to go to the shelf here. We're going to right click on our created material and graph network. Um, and then we're going to change that to be called Pixar floor. All right, so this is quite a long shading network. Um, well, not it's fairly long. Um, it's got a quite a lot of nodes, so um, pay attention as you're going along. And if you make a mistake, just make sure you go back and follow what I do as I do it. Um, so the first node that we're going to grab. So what I'm going to do before I drop them is I'm just going to click and drag that to the right hand side because it's going to chuck all the nodes in there. So it just keeps things a bit tidier as you do it this way. Uh, so the first thing we're going to get is Pixar tile. It's going to give us Pixar tile manifold and it gives us this node here. I'm going to expand all the nodes by um, selecting them and pressing the three button on my keyboard just so they're easy, easy visible uh, for all the connections for you guys to see. The next one we're going to grab is, um, actually I'm going to go through a few settings as I work. Um, for the Pixar tile manifold, the first thing I'm going to do is select the number of textures. Uh, so this is the number of different files that you're going to connect into it. For my example, I'm using four different textures, so I'm going to type in four. Uh, grid offset, um, I'll leave it 0.5 for now, but I'm actually going to reduce that to zero once we get to rendering. But I'll, just so I can show you what it is in the render, I'll um, keep that at 0.5. Grout width is the literal width of the grout or the space between each tile. I'm going to make that 0.05 for now. I'm not sure what exactly that should be, but we'll see how we go with that setting and I can reduce it if I need to. I'm also going to randomize the orientation and random S and random T flip. So that will rotate each tile randomly and it'll flip them on the T and the S um, axis according to the normal of wherever you've uh, applied the texture. And then the next one that's good to get is PXR multi texture. So if you just type in PXR multi, it'll give you that one. And um, 
we want to connect the, the result multi to uh, manifold multi there. And now we can connect our files. So uh, file name zero, it starts from zero. Um, go to wherever you have your images saved. And you'll see that I've got four here. So I'm just going to connect the first one and then the second one. We've got a couple of other um, things down here that will change momentarily that just allow us to randomize some parameters uh, just to keep it looking a little bit more natural or stop it looking so repetitious, uh, if, especially if you've only got a few different um, tiles. Normally having more than like six or eight would actually be useful, um, but if you've only got a few, being able to randomize the parameters here is actually quite useful. Uh, the next node we're gonna type in is uh, PXR to float. So it's that top one there. We don't want float three. Uh, we don't want fl to float three. We want PXR to float. That's going to give us this node here. And we're going to connect the result mask to the input of that. And um, essentially, this is our grout. Um, so we're going to um, select channel two on the PXR to float. And um, what that is, is the channel zero is your S and channel one is your T, um, and then channel two is your um, your mask for your grout. So that's why you wanna switch it to channel uh, two. And then we wanna um, sort of converge these two nodes together using a Pixar blend node, which is this one here. Let's expand that as well. So um, starting with the textures, uh, we're going to use the result RGB and we're going to connect this to the bottom. Um, and the reason that the textures are underneath the grout is because um, if you don't have the textures on top, you won't be able to see the grout. So uh, we're going to go result F uh, to top alpha or top A as, it's, as the node is suggested there. And then this will just allow us using the, um, the grout gap between the... Um, between the tiles, we can now assign a color to using the top color. So uh, let's give it, I've already gone through and tested this. So I've got a couple of different colors that I've played with. So I'll just give it this sort of desaturated brown. And the bottom alpha, we want to make sure it's set all the way to one and clamp out, um, clamp outputs uh, enabled. And finally, we're going to create a Pixar color correct node. And this color correct node, we're actually going to be using to drive the specular channel of our uh, Pixar uh, surface shader. So we're going to connect a result RGB to the input RGB and we're going to also um, connect the result RGB to the diffuse color of the uh, Pixar floor. And um, you can change the roughness if you wish. I'm going to keep it at zero for now. Um, and then we're also going to move over to the Pixar color correct. Uh, so there's only a few different things that we're going to change here. Um, one of them just to get the um, the specularity to be a little bit more uh, pop a little bit better. We're going to change the um, the contrast in the RGB to 0.25 um, on each RGB channel. Um, and we're going to switch the gamma to 0.8. Uh, contrast pivot at 0.5 is fine and HSV so that's our hue saturation and value uh, the saturation we're actually going to color our specular channel just a little bit uh, this isn't necessarily physically accurate but it actually helps with this particular um, texture I've found to make it look a little bit better um, and we want to change the value um, to we'll start with 0.1 but I think it's probably going to have to be a little bit lower than that and I think that's all good for now. So we will select our Pixar color correct. And I'm just going to type three again on the keyboard. And then uh, I'm just going to go into the uh, Pixar surface node for a second. I'm going to go to this primary specular. I'm actually going to change this to physical um, just because this is a little bit easier to work with in this particular um, workflow. So we're going to select our result RGB and we're going to go to uh, specular edge color and um, for now we're going to leave everything else at its default and um, I'll just drop a light into the scene and I'm just going to grab one direct light um, just so uh, just so we can see the the way the specularity is working and I'm going to run a render all right so we've got our tile set uh, on screen now um, now the first thing you're going to notice is that that doesn't look very good. Um, so there's a couple of things that we want to change. So just with the hypershade editor again, we're going to go to the Pixar mani tile manifold 
and we're going to change uh, the first thing we're going to change is the global scale so I'm going to set that to three and um, as you'll see it's created um, more essentially um, more uh, tiles on screen so the more you increase that so if I make it to 10 we get lots of little tiles um, so I'm going to stick with three for now though and then the other thing is you'll see that these tiles are all offset from each other at about the halfway point and that's because we've got the um, grid offset to point set to point 0.5 so if I set that to zero it looks a lot better and finally there's one other thing that I want to change um, is this grout width it's way too wide so let's go to the um, grout width and change it to 0.01 that looks pretty much like the photo so um, yeah it's straight away it's not looking too bad um, the specularity is pretty accurate I think um, though there is one thing that I have noticed is that the the color of our or the value isn't quite right the, uh, it doesn't seem like the uh, gamma is quite correct so we can actually fix that very easily um, just plugging a pixar gamma node between the multi texture and the pixar blend so if we go to pxr and gamma we'll get one of those nodes right there and then we can just input that into the input um, RGB and then send the result RGB to the bottom RGB where it was before and then we change the gamma to something like 0 0.8 which I think is a little bit more accurate and run that IPR again uh, 0.8 is not enough so let's go down a little bit lower maybe 0 0.5 eh, a bit dark 0 0.6 0 0.6 looks good all right so that's pretty much done it um, there's a couple of ways that we can adjust these things and I'll just show you how you can do it because there's no point just copying what I did because it won't work for everything you need to know what everything is doing so um, the color correct node like I said is our specular is the way we're controlling our specularity of our shader so if I just get the attributes in the screen there with the Pixar color node uh, selected we can change the value of that specularity to say um, we could go higher so if we went to 0.2 we get more specularity and actually one other thing I want to change um, if we go back to the Pixar floor node um, and go to advanced I think GGX is a slightly better um, specularity model for this particular floor and uh, you could also adjust the roughness here so um, if I wanted it to be slightly less rough looking um, this is like a linoleum tile so it's actually point uh, quite you know the specularity is diffused quite a lot by it so point two is actually quite a good spot for it you could also adjust the um, the amount by uh, changing the output range um, so the output max is a little bit lower so you'll get a lot less specularity but not necessarily uh, physically accurate um, and like I said before I changed the saturation in the um, uh, of the color so if I set this to one you'll see that you're get you're getting complete saturation of the specularity so if you set that off you'd get completely white specular but because the floor is um, it's sort of absorbing the light a little bit because of the nature of the surface setting it to something a little bit high for this particular surface um, is sort of uh, not the worst idea and it does just vary the color of the specularity just a fraction which is nice um, and finally I'll just show you a couple of other things so with a random orientation and um, all those off you'll see that you start to get all those repetitions which are ugly so random S and T you're usually going to use orientation if it doesn't matter about the orientation if you were doing something like wood planks this wouldn't work because you want your obviously like a timber floor for example all the timber is going the same direction so random orientation wouldn't work because you get widely cut narrow pieces of timber rather than long cuts of timber which is obviously how a timber floor is normally set um, and the other thing that you might want to be adjusting is the scale of the S and the T so if I said uh, scale S was 2 for example you'd see that it's double uh, the length of the width um, and obviously inversely that would work as well uh, obviously for a square tile you'd set it to 1 and 1 um, and there is the bevel as well so if I just set this to 1 I'll make it really obvious what it's doing so the grout will receive a bevel or a gradient as it approaches the texture if you set this to something quite low point 0.01, 0.05, no, 0.02. Yeah, that's probably all right. Um, you'll see if you zoom in, it's just creating a slight amount of um, uh, gradient along the edge of that. And actually, this grout color could probably do to be changed as well because it's not quite right. So if we went to our um, Pixar blend node, and then the top color is our grout, 
so we can make it something darker and more saturated like that um, or slightly lighter in value you sort of can just play with it all right and one of the other things that you can adjust um, is under the pixar multi-texture um, so I said before with the randomize, you can randomize the hue. Um, so if I set this to 0.1, you'll get quite a lot of randomization. So you'll see a lot more of that red channel popping up. So maybe something like 0.05. It will just give it or maybe even less 0.02, just a light bit of randomization, uh, randomization uh, and the hue. And you could do the same in the um, saturation, for example. So some tiles will look slightly dirtier than others in this example. Gamma, um, you'd want to do this quite low. Otherwise, if you set it so like that, um, you get quite a bit of difference, so maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.02 is pretty good. Luminance, I probably wouldn't touch for this one, and seed. Um, if you increase the seed, it's just going to, uh, basically the seed is where the randomization is generated from. So if you're not happy with the first instance of the randomization, you could change the seed, and it'll change how it's randomized. Um, and one other thing you might want to change is saturation mode. Um, additive will give you a slightly better result a lot of the time as well with this sort of uh, texture so uh, yeah keep that in mind and um, that is pretty much it so I'll just sort of set it up like this and I'll bring the um, Photoshop image back in that's not the correct program all right so obviously my kitchen is a lot lighter than this particular scene um, but as you can see it does sort of represent it very well it's got the same amount of specularity basically um, and you're getting the indentation um, from the way that the specularity node is driving uh, the edge color of your Pixar um, surface shader so this is just one example of how you'd use this for one particular material but obviously you can do this obviously you can do this with like a timber floor and there's already a, a Pixar um, preset material in the material browser if you haven't seen that that's uh, this button here I'll give you this and you've got like the oak wood texture which you could use uh, but if you want to set up your own this is one way to do it and you could do this for all sorts of things obviously not just the floor you could do tiled walls um, you could have you know a brick wall would be really easy to do with this sort of thing lots of uh, different ways you could set this up this is just one example um, so yeah, that's pretty, pretty much it for this tutorial though. I hope this was fairly easy to follow and uh, that you got something out of it. If you did, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And um, if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed as I'm doing a couple of tutorials a week for all sorts of CG stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you are subscribed. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.